Hello and welcome to Scale to Seven Figures and our Million Dollar Fireside Chat. I am Lisa Anderson, Strategic Business Advisor, Virtual CFO with Anovel Transformation Solutions and your Million Dollar Mentor. And I am excited you are joining me. Scale to Seven Figures is an interactive group of small business owners in the business to business, business to corporate, and business to government markets who are ready to scale their businesses to the next level. Our group is an opportunity to share, learn, and grow together without competition. Each week, I bring tips, tactics, and strategies through our Million Dollar Masterclasses and our Million Dollar Fireside Chats. If you are not familiar with us, head on over to www.scale27figures.com and check us out. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy our next powerful conversation. Well, good afternoon and hello everyone and welcome to Scale to Seven Figures and our Million Dollar Fireside Chat. I am happy that you are here with me today. Happy Wednesday, my friends, and thank you for joining me. I am Lisa Anderson, Strategic Business Advisor and Virtual CFO with Anavo Transformation Solutions and your Million Dollar Mentor. And this month of March, we are highlighting CEOs who are changing the game in their industries and in their businesses. This is all in honor of Women's History Month. The objective is to provide inspiration and motivation to women in business across the nation as well as across the world and to help them to remove stumbling blocks, to scale their businesses and to continue building the legacies that they dream of. And I am super, super excited to today uh, to have my friend and my client, really, really close um, client join me today to talk about her superpowers, and how she is nurturing workforces across the country. So help me please join, help me uh, uh, bring uh, Laura Labovich from the Career Strategy Group to the show, and we're going to have a great conversation. So hey, Laura, how are you, my friend? Hi, Lisa. (laughs) It's always so great to see you. Thank you so much for including me. I'm, I'm really excited. I am so excited to have you. This is such a great conversation. And, you know, I I just love the things that you're doing with your business, the things you've been doing over the last couple of years. And, you know, I think it's, it's, it's important for others to hear, you know, all the great stuff that you're doing as inspiration to to them as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) So before we dive in, can you share with everybody a little bit about who you are and what is the career strategy group? You bet. So my name is Laura Lebovich. I have a company called the Career Strategy Group, but what most people don't know is what I did before that. It was a long journey to build my company the way it is. Um, I wanted to be in HR since the time I was 13 years old. And Mm. I think that's sort of an odd thing to want at 13. You know, I didn't want to be a singer or a magician or a doctor. I wanted to be a human resources manager. So I did end up going for my degree and working in HR for a long time. I worked at Walt Disney World and I recruited all over the country for them. And then I moved to America Online and I worked in human resources in HR proper. Um, And it was there that I think I really found my calling. I always thought Mm -hmm. HR was my calling and I, I really admire the wonderful people who do human resources for organizations, it's a very tough job, balancing the, the workers, the employees and their happiness and balancing the employer sort of mandates and what it is that they want for their employees. They're not always the same thing. Mm-hmm. And I found that to be a challenge. Um, but what really was transformative for me, Lisa, was when I, and you've heard me tell the story a lot, but when I had to lay off a bunch of people when AOL merged with Time Warner. and. Mm-hmm. I went into HR because I am a very empathetic nurturing person and I um, loved helping people enjoy their work more. But when I was charged with laying off hundreds of people and some of them were my friends, it was really awful. And Mm. my husband kept Hallmark in business that year. He'd come home with a card almost every night. And I realized when I was at AOL and those people went into another room, they would come out a little less unhappy. And the room they went into was with the outplacement coach. 
And so they were learning that it was going to be okay. You know, that yeah. they were, they were going to have services to help them land back on their feet. That's when in that moment, I knew that's what I needed to do with my life. It took me a little, a little while. I actually purchased another franchise that I sold shortly after. So that this would be my second business, but this is exactly where I need to be. And it's, it's perfect for who I am because I love human resources and I love what they do. And they're really in a tough position to have to do some of the things that they do. And I, I'm really present to the fact that um, outplacement is just a blessing. You know, it is a gift. And so I'm really honored to be able to offer that service to my clients. I think it, it is absolutely a gift. Um, and it's, it is very special too. you know, to be able to be in a position where you can help to um, settle things, you know, during situations that can be um, shaky, um, tumultuous in, in some instances, scary. I mean, you just really help to, to settle things. And I absolutely love that about what you do. Thank you. I've been really, um, I've been really inspired by the companies that have decided to do outplacement services who have never done them before, have never brought in an outplacement firm, especially this last year. A lot of companies, you know, are doing it, but the people who are, for me, real game changers are the ones that they, they provide outplacement and they are a little more flexible in how they let their people go. Mm -hmm. In that, you know, they these are people, especially this last year, who are per top performers. They're people that in anyone's um, sort of in anyone's books, they wouldn't want to let go if they didn't have to. Right. They wouldn't want mm -hmm. them. to leave. So they they let them stay sometimes for a good month. And they so they pay for their, their paycheck and they also allow them to do outplacements for us simultaneously. It's inspiring, Lisa. It's just mm -hmm. it's wonderful that some of the companies are able to do that and how great for their image and their brand that they can you know, take these people and really give them a very soft landing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're helping the company um, maintain reputation and relationships, right? Um, because, you know, essentially, I, I remember a mentor told me this many years ago, that, you, you know, the people that you hire can one day become your customer. And so you want to treat them every single day with the idea that they are your customer mm -hmm. um, because one day they could be paying you. And, you know, that was probably one of the, the best advice that I, that I received as I re, as it related to managing my workforce. Yeah. And I recently um, was made aware of an organization, not my client, but an organization that really treated their people poorly Mm. and then gave them outplacement assistance, but a really small package, and it didn't make up for it. They looked mm. at it like, um, yes, they gave outplacement, but they looked at it like, you know, you really didn't take care of us when you had us, you know, inside your purview, right? When you when you had us in the organization. So mm. it's, it's really important. Outplacement is great. That's a great last step. If yeah. you're a good company, you take care of your employees, you're an employer of choice, you have to do outplacement, right? Yeah. But it is it is really important, obviously, that people take care of their employees and they nurture them sort of through, throughout, not just at the very, very end. But that is a really important effort, too. Yeah, absolutely. So outplacement is not the only thing that you do, though, mm -hmm. right? There are other things that you do as well. What else do you do? What else do you how else do you yeah. work, help the workforce Thank or you. the marketplace? <laughs> oh, right. Soup, soup to nuts. Um, so we do. So for, for companies, we're a B2B and a B2C. So for companies, we offer, in addition to corporate outplacement services, and that's sort of the whole gamut, right? So we help write scripts. We help um, them deliver the message. We we bring their people on board and take them through to you know 90 days into the job. We also offer executive coaching, life coaching. We have a retirement coach on staff. If they decide they want to start their own business, they don't want to go back into traditional employment, we can help them do that. Right now, we have we have someone working on their business plan with our organization. So, but mainly, it's it's all around the careers umbrella, right? So it's. It's career management and career happiness. And as a, as a part of career happiness, it includes making sure that your employees are happy while they're there. So one organization, I can't list their name, but I was so impressed by this, Lisa, because they, they're one of my favorite clients. And they decided that they had a lot of young people. Their, their employees were skewing sort of millennial and younger. Mm -hmm. And um, they were not happy. They just mm -hmm. knew they weren't happy. They weren't performing their best. They weren't doing a bad job. They just were doing their job sort of by rote and they were not super happy about it. And the, the HR folks got together and decided, you know what? I don't think these 
these, these employees know how to decide what they want to do with their life. Mm. Right. So they hired us to do a workshop. It was super creative. We didn't use the term job search. Right. We didn't mention, you know, Hey, we want you, you know, what the employer really was saying was we want them to leave if they're mm. not happy, but they weren't leaving. They weren't taking the initiative to do it. So we created a workshop to go. It's okay. It's okay. If you decide to leave, but here's here's how you do it. And by the way, we don't want you to leave. You know, of course, we didn't use the term leave, but there are lots of organ of opportunities within this organization. And here's how you figure out sort of what you love and what you want to do next. Now, I don't recommend that all employees bring it, employers bring us in to talk about job search, right. but we were able to craft this really compelling sort of package for them, this workshop for them that enabled the people who were not happy to exit, and for the people who were happy to stay and consider moving around inside the organization. Wow. That, that is um, very unique. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but, you know, I, I, I think that helps to solidify culture, yeah. right? And it does give, uh, you, you mentioned something, which is career happy. And that, that gives them that opportunity. I, I know I have all, let's see, six, six generations living in my house right now. Wow. From the so newest of the new. That's so great. It's just wonderful what you do. It's awesome. I love well, it. I enjoy it, but it, it gets interesting sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I do enjoy it. But we so we have all, all six generations. And when I look at my millennial and I look at my Gen Z, um, they're they're still trying to figure it out, right? Um, they're still trying to figure out what it is that they absolutely love. Mm -hmm. um, they know what they don't like. Um, they don't know what they really want to step into for you forever and a day. So I think it's good to be able, from an employment standpoint, to be able to help your employees do that. I get the 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 opportunity to do that because they're my children that happen to work for me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I want them to be happy no matter what. I don't want. Yeah. I, I know that they're not happy doing what I do. Right. I know that they've, they've been very vocal about that forever, but there are aspects of, of the, the whole um, concept of owning and operating a business and some pieces within the business that they enjoy. And so just giving them the opportunity to explore, but having that open conversation, which, um, you know, we tried to do what, when, when we had a larger staff, when, when I had about 40 people, we started something called desires of the heart which was an opportunity for our teams to get together and talk about, forget about the job that you're in right now and forget about the, the place that you're working. Let's talk about where do you want to be ultimately in life? And then that was a, a way for us to try to figure out how we could help them get there. Mm -hmm. I so, love the layers of the heart. Yeah. That's basically what we were, what we were doing with this organization. Mm -hmm. It was so creative. And I, I think it's wonderful because why not, if you're, if your parents, or if you don't have someone in your life who is enabling you to really figure it out, yeah. you can see where people would get stuck in something that makes them unhappy. So that was really cool. I mean, we offer workshops of all kinds that are around career happiness and job search and mindset. Um, and we, we, we pair that with some of our outplacement offerings. So we'll yeah. go into organizations, you know, if they want to do a one to many, so if they, you know, they're, they're doing a large downsizing and they don't necessarily want to give a one-on-one -on -one package, we'll come in and do workshops. We've done federal employment, sort of, mm -hmm. you know, how do you get a job in the federal government to, uh, how do you set up your job search for success with some tools and interviewing, of course, salary negotiation. We have an amazing salary negotiation coach on staff. She's able to take the offer letter and squeeze out more money for people. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> That's she, gold right know, there right. all by itself. <laughs> I know. She's been in compensation for so many years. She knows how employers package their services and she'll work with an, with an individual and say, I think you'll get more. And here's how we're going to ask for it. It's so cool. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Career happiness all the way down to the money. <laughs> exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. So, you know, I'm talking about superpowers this month um, and what we bring together as women in business. Um, and so, you know, I, I know your superpower, you know your superpower, but can you share with everybody what your superpower really is? And, you know, beyond what we've already talked about, how that is really important uh, to the community. Yeah, I, I, I think I will run the risk, sharing this with you will run the risk 
many people are like, I don't know if you should say this because it sounds soft to many. Mm -hmm. I don't think it is soft, but it will sound soft to many. And I'm going to risk it anyways. Um, my, my superpower really is empathy. And I think that in this business that I'm in, I absolutely have to be empathetic. Yeah. And the reason is I could get someone who knew they were getting laid off and they've been searching and they get on the phone with me and they're like, Laura, I'm ready to go. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I could also get someone who I did who said to me, I'm really, really upset and I'm really bitter and I'm really depressed and I can't start the job search. Mm -hmm. And so I work this out. And so I worked with someone for our team worked with someone for six months to get them past that stage where they were not so unhappy, right? Yeah. They were mm -hmm. they were to a point where they could get into an interview and not break down and cry. And uh, you have to have empathy, right? Yeah. And yeah. so in addition, I mean, I'm, I'm a corporate insider, you know, so I've been in the corporate world. I worked at Walt Disney World, AOL, at Deco. I've worked at some great companies. And I know how to do HR. I did it, you know, I, I did it for 12 mm -hmm. years. Um, and so I have mad respect for, for what HR folks do and I get it. And I love being that partner to them because I can help them make their, I can make their lives easier. Yes. You know, I, we give them a report, um, every time, you know, their person lands or when they use the service in a certain way, we, we update them on what's going on. So they're constantly seeing how their money is, is being spent and they know that they've invested in a good trusting resource. Um, but I think that I can't do that if I wasn't nurturing, you know, right. I was all about big business and I was all about automating everything and making sure I sent people to webinars and, you know, this, this lecture and this, you know, mm -hmm. on, on demand product, they're great, but where's the personalized, exactly. you know, the personalized one-on-one -on -one service. So a, a client doesn't come to me and say, oh my God, I, I got an interview at the Gates foundation. And they want me to answer this question and I'm, and, and they want me to say, you know what? I have a webinar about interviewing. Go to, go to that webinar. Mm. No, they want to talk through it. This is the Gates foundation. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. know how to get a job there and what do I have to say? And it's highly competitive. So everything we do is extremely personalized. It's very customized. And I think my superpower is that I'm empathetic and that I can, that, I, that my goal in life is really to nurture the workforce and to nurture the people within it. Yeah, I, I think everything you just said is so, so very important, you know, especially in the age of the Internet and um, what we learned over the course of this last 12 months is at, at least I, what I learned is there's certain things I, I can't take for granted. I really miss people, even though I am a super introvert. I, I, I love being in my own personal spaces <laughs> with my heads down, crunching it out. Is You're that surprising to you? <laughs> it, is, it is a little surprising to me. I have to admit. I know you very well, but I don't know. I I, I don't see you as an introvert. I I've learned. Like I've learned through business that I needed to. I, I've learned to be an ambivert, right? I've yeah. learned to be that. But my natural, my natural state is complete introvert. Complete. Yes, absolutely. I, I could sit at home and be mm -hmm. happy for a really long time things in quiet know. spaces. Things I didn't know about Lisa Anderson. I'll take what I didn't know about Lisa Anderson for a hundred. <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I love people too. I crave yeah. them, you know, and, and I'm learning that. But but with the with the Internet, with the, you know, social media, um, with the, the, the social distancing that we're experiencing right now, we need that interaction. We absolutely do. And. I think that uh, kudos to you for bringing that, for keeping that at the forefront, because it's necessary, honestly. Oh, honestly. I appreciate that. And we, we've done some really amazing things recently with our organization, just if I'm able to share. Yeah, um, please. One of them is we've brought in a, a really incredible and innovative tool that allows and enables mock interviewing. And mm -hmm. it's great. There are a lot of mock interview tools out there. I happen to like this one the best because an individual can go in. They can video record their answer to whatever question they want. And then they, with one click of a button, they can send it to their coach and their coach can give them feedback and send it back. And then they can keep going back and forth. They can do it for any question. And inside the database, they can watch hundreds of videos on how do you, how you answer specific questions like, tell me about yourself. what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Within the same tool, there's a, an opportunity to review a collection 
of curated and discounted wellness resources. For example, mm -hmm. only with our firm, you can get better help at like a severe discount. So people that are going through like emotional distress and need better help. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. It's, they advertise all the time on CNN, but it's a, it's an online psychology counseling service, right? So mm -hmm. within this tool, you can get these curated resources for a severely um, marked down di uh, discount. It's really cool. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, you, you're doing some, some great work and the tools that you bring to the table, I think are, are absolutely necessary. And it, it falls in line with your superpower, honestly. Um, you know, you and I've had some conversations about bringing technology to the table, but innovation and technology will serve and can serve in a, in a space and in its place. Yes. But you you I mean, the whole foundation of how of why you exist is centered around human interaction, empathy, caring, nurturing. And I think, Lisa, that the, the challenge with other outplacement services and I'm not knocking them, but I think they're looking for ways to replace hmm. and reduce the human interaction. Right. Hmm. I'm not. You know, I, I want my my clients to meet with their coach whenever hmm. they need to. Right. And in, in their during their time with us. If they have an interview at the moment, I don't want them to be pushed to a webinar. And so I use technology in a way to support them and mm -hmm. to encourage them and to help them, but certainly not to replace the human interaction with their coach. Yeah. Oh, I'd like to say that you can be all about the numbers or you can be about impact. Yeah. that's very And true. really at the end of the day, if it's all about the numbers, the only thing that you're impacting is your pocket. It doesn't really impact the the community. It, it starts to hurt the community. I mean, we, we've seen that in so many different cases. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So tell us, tell us, you know, we, we're, we're celebrating Women's History Month and women have been doing so many great things. And when we take a look at the changes that are happening in the marketplace and um, how um, things have transpired over the course of the last year since the pandemic, Women owned businesses are the uh, fastest growing by numbers, <laughs> um, the fastest growing um, uh, uh, business classification, yeah. right? With 1,200 businesses being started every single day, right? Literally by women. That's amazing. So I would like for you, but however, on the other side of it, we still have a lot of um, uh, this a big dis dis disparity or gap between how much we're earning and how much others are earning. Um, how long we stay in business, uh, really building our way to legacy and starting to build value. We still are, are kind of slow with that. So I would love for you to share your journey as a woman in business um, as a way to help others, you know, kind of hear your story and, and, and you know, pick, pick their boots up and keep on going. Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question. And I think, you know, I've been in the business now for 15 years, and I, I think I'm pretty well entrenched with my careers industry, having, you know, I'm a judge of an international resume writing competition. And I wrote a book that was a bestseller called 100 Conversations for Career Success. And it did so well. Um, it really launched me to international markets. And I'm very hugely grateful. And I think the, the lessons that I've learned along the way are many. Um, one of the lessons that I would say uh, I recommend that female business owners do is, um, is, is, is probably, I know, this, I know this seems crazy, but just don't try to be everything to everyone. You know, I mean, you and I both know that someone who says they're a business coach, a life coach, an executive coach, you know, we have those services, but we only use them when absolutely necessary, bring in our bench. Yeah. Um, but we're not an executive coaching, life coaching, leadership coaching, OD coaching firm, right? We're, we're a career management firm. Yeah. Um, and, and I learned that the hard way because yeah. when I started my business, I decided to do talent acquisition, sourcing resumes, HR consulting, career coaching, career change. Oh my gosh. Right. <laughs> and I started to check in on my energy. Yeah. And it occurred to me that the only time I was really happy was when I was doing stuff with job seekers. Right. Mm. And so first, of course, I started my business. Once I carved a bunch of the stuff off, I focused on job seekers. 
Yeah. And then, of course, I moved into outplacement pretty quickly thereafter. That was really sort of the the culmination of, of the work that I've always done and always wanted to do, right, ever since I left AOL. Um, but once I, I sort of landed on that, that niche, uh, I became who I am today. And I think it's okay to do a bunch of things if it's in the interest of really figuring out what you want to do ultimately. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the companies that, that I see that say I'm this and I'm this and I'm this and I'm this and they're a catch all. Um, I, 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 it dilutes the effectiveness of their brand. Mm -hmm. So for me, I think female business owners, you know, choose, you know, take a little while, but choose who you want to be and then own it. And, and the mm -hmm. fear about, I'm, am I going to get a client that will go away real quick. You're going to get your first client. Just, just keep moving forward and making progress, whether it's building the website, creating a signature speech. You know, I, I, I had a coach way back when, not someone nearly as good as you, but I had a coach way back when in 2007 who said, create one signature speech, one speech that could be used for 20 minutes to get, you know, into lunch and learns or networking events, and then use that speech to create your brand so that you are the person that people go to when they think of X. Right. So people mm -hmm. know I'm associated with job search, the right job yes. search. Expert. So that's my expertise. Yours is million dollars, right? Yours and legacy. I would say legacy is probably your brand, right? So mine is job search. So people think of careers or job search, but they don't think of HR. They don't think of, um, you know, organizational development necessarily, but that's by, I did that on purpose. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So I would just say, Figure out who you are and then take it to the marketplace with things like a signature speech, you know, with sound bites on blogs, with that sort of thing. And yes. and and don't be everything to to everyone. Yeah. I like to say focus wins the race. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it really does. It, it, it wins the race every single time. I mean, like you said, you can add, you know, some ancillary things that help to enhance the niche that you've created. Um, along the way, but you 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 really do have to focus, and, and far too many are afraid to focus. They're afraid they're losing out on something yeah. if they focus in. But but you know what? When you focus, you're gaining so much more. I think FOMO, fear of missing out, is a real deterrent to success as it comes mm. to business owners. And I also think one thing I learned from you is I've learned so many things from you. But one thing I learned from you is you know don't chase everybody else's shiny object. Yeah. You know, just because someone else is doing it doesn't mean that it's right for you. And I did that for many years. And I would see my my colleagues doing a podcast or I would see them doing this, you know, spending hours and hours and hours on Twitter. And I did that for so long. And then I noticed it's Sunday morning. It's nine o'clock. I'm on Twitter. Why? This is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I realized my energy was like, you know, Marie Kondo. It's like it just drops. You're like, and I stopped Twitter right away that day. Yes. After two years of like really building my brand, but I realized that the energy was not healthy energy, mm -hmm. right? And I was chasing someone else's shiny object. And the other thing that I still today say to myself, and I struggle with this, I will say as a business owner, is that my colleagues will be getting, you know, oh, top career site or, you know, best blog. And I think, okay, that's fine. That's their thing. My thing is being the best outplacement partner to my company's <laughs> metro area in the mid-Atlantic region. And I think yes. we're doing a damn good job. You know, we have over 120 partners. We really, we really um, ex excel at getting our clients hired 60% faster than the national average. But I don't need to be focusing every minute on my blog. That is not who I am. And that's okay. And it doesn't get the um, impact and, and um, transformation and you know the way that you want to help the community, it does it that doesn't do that, <laughs> yeah. you know. So I, kudos, I love that. Thank you. I <laughs> well, love you that. definitely helped me over the years, don't you think? No, I'm just here. I'm a oh, tool. I <laughs> Seriously, I, you know, I, I I am the available tool to have a conversation with you. But you already, it's it's already there. It's just. Huh getting it out and, and executing on it. So I, I love the, the conversations that we have. I, I really do, do. I do too. I love going back and listening to them later and going, oh, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. You told me to do that in November, 2019. I did it. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And, and you know, it's 2021. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it's on the roadmap. 
That's, That's the thing. It's on the roadmap. We we might not get to the things on our roadmap immediately. And, and nine times out of 10, we're not. It's going to take some time to get there, but it's on the roadmap and, and you're going to get there. It's, it's going to happen. So I'm, I'm never concerned unless we just completely stop and we're not doing anything. Then, then I'm, I'm concerned. But that has not been the case with you. You have been progressively moving ever since we started working together and everything. I mean, when I say last year, it was your year, you, everything that we had done prior to that, you were getting ready for last year was absolutely true. Every bit of it. Not have been successful. What had happened was my business would not have enabled me and with the way I had it structured, it would not have enabled me to support the individuals that I needed to support last year with all of the downsizings that happened, yeah, yeah. right? There were so many companies that laid people off and we were fortunate to be their outplacement vendor of choice. But I don't know. I, I don't know that I would have been able to support that business without having set up the company for success the year prior. Yeah. So everything happens for a reason. I, I really think that that was a fortunate, um, a fortunate, uh, not an accident, but a sort of a fortunate episode. You and I had that talk and restructured the business and it really enabled me to support them. And, and by the way, it wasn't a challenge either. Mm. to handle the volume that we had last year it yeah. was it was pretty natural and it was pretty easy because we had created this this structure that enabled the workflow to be seamless yeah i love it hey preparation that's it is that that's luck it's preparation yes i wanted to share one other thing in honor sure. of women's business month women's Please. women's history month um i am a three-time business owner my first business was <laughs> I purchased a franchise. It was an, an public. It was a publication called Metro Woman Directory, and I launched it throughout Virginia and Maryland. I quickly realized that there was zero nurturing in that business. Zero, <laughs> zero, and I sold it um, a year later for a hundred percent profit. Now, a hundred percent profit was exactly get this ten thousand um, dollars. It was not a lot of money, but it was my first foray into business. Yes. Um, then I started Career Strategy Group, and it has been a, a massive success, and I'm super grateful for everything I've been able to do. I also have a passion of working with business owners, um, and so I, I purchased a second franchise, and it's called Network Lead Exchange, and I'm working with women and, and men business owners um, in the D.C. area and around the country, and we're helping people thrive with their business, and I'm really creating a very generous community because the organization rewards commit it rewards referrals so if you send a referral to someone you're going to get a commission um, because a lot of times people are in networking groups and they just they, they don't get leads and so as a result they don't get any money but in this group if they give a lead they're going to get money so givers really gain in this group so i just wanted to share this mm -hmm. is my third business venture and um I'm just really, I'm really excited. It also sort of disputes the myth that you can only do one thing in your life. You can't, you can do many, many things in your, in your life. So I, you I, can I, absolutely, but it's still in your niche. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. It's still, it's still, it's an ancillary product that fits right in, into, uh -huh. into the swing of, and it aligns very well with your niche. So thank you. Yes. I had an opportunity to present for your first meeting and it's exciting. It's, it's exciting to see the um, the venture start to to grow and to see the the business owners join you in that in that way. Um, they they've got a good a, a really good leader in that capacity. Wow. So I appreciate that. I have some great members too. They're kicking ass right now. They're just <laughs> they're taking names. They're having a great time. So That's it's awesome. really fun. Yeah. So Laura, tell us what's next for your legacy. What are you up to? My legacy. I really want to. I mean. Personally, I would like to <laughs> I would like to move to Europe and do some work there um, and and help you know the career space in in Europe. Um, but here, I really want to get more involved in the in the community. Um, I work a lot with um, PEOs, professional employer organizations. I know you you know them, and we have a lot of PEO clients. And PEOs, as you know, are organizations that sort of handle everything for um, employers who don't really want to manage necessarily everything that goes on with an employee. And we have quite a few clients. They've been absolutely wonderful partners. And I'm, I'm really going to work hard to get to know that group 
and uh, see how I can support them better. In addition to all of my HR clients and start to help out more in the community. I, I've been um, a fixture in this community now since 1999. And I've been really proud. We just launched our second job club. It's been super successful. It was just a month ago we launched it and we have 300 members and counting. And uh, so helping job seekers in this community, helping my HR partners and, uh, you know, really being a great partner for my PEO clients as well. So my legacy is uh, meaningful, helping people have meaningful and thriving careers. Um, and I, I think I'm, I'm doing that. So. You certainly are. You are. I, I, I'm really proud of the work that you're doing awesome. and excited as well. Thank you. Yeah, I can't I can't wait. I mean, you're you're every year is next level, next awesome. level. I'm so excited about it. So. Really, uh, thank you. Well, yes. you know, you know, I, I just am so grateful to you. You know, you've been a wonderful mentor and, you know, you just do amazing, amazing work in the community and amazing work with your with your clients. And uh, I'm always inspired by you every day. Well, thank you. Thank, I appreciate it. You make my job easy, though. I will oh, tell you that. You do. Oh, <laughs> so thank you. Thank We're you. a mutual admiration society. That's yes, right. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on and sharing your story and sharing your superpower and being an inspiration for other women in business. I mean, this this is such a necessary conversation. Um, and, and if we can get more people together in your group and in my group, we just... We, we can really create a lot of difference in, in the business community and abroad. So I, really I appreciate you. If anyone who's listening wants to get in touch with me, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find me at the career strategy um, You can ask Lisa. <laughs> she, she has a quick connection to me, I think. So uh, I am, I'm again, I'm super grateful for being here. I always appreciate that you ask me whenever you're doing something cool like this. And I'm always happy to be here. Well, thank you, my friend. I appreciate you. And we will touch base again really soon. You got it. Have a great right. day. You too. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow. Well, there you have it, guys. I mean, I, I, I talk a lot about the fact that uh, business is all about focus. It's all about alignment. But most importantly, it is tapping into things that you are extremely passionate about and staying in touch with um, the way that you're feeling about adding on things within your business. And does it really serve you? Um, because if it serves you, then it will serve the business and it will also serve the community. Uh, I, I enjoy having Laura as a part of, the, of our community and I enjoy the conversations that we've had and the things that she's doing in the, in the community to help, you know, uh, career professionals create their happiness. Uh, I, I just absolutely love it. So thank you guys for joining me this week uh, for this meet, uh, very important conversation. I will be back next week with another super CEO conversation. Actually, I will have two on the show next week. We will have Megan Price and Kim Nelson Edwards, who will be joining me to talk about their unique superpowers of training law enforcement to execute insight policing and why that is so critically important to our community right now. So I hope you will join me this time next week at 5 p.m. on Wednesday. And until then, I am Lisa Anderson, Strategic Business Advisor and Virtual CFO with A Novel Transformation and your Million Dollar Mentor. And I look forward to seeing you back again next week. Thank you for joining. Bye-bye.